Hello, this is Haku Bean, and today we are going to be reading some rules horror. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into it. We're starting with a pretty short one. It's called Sludge. You're watching TV when a PSA starts playing. The first inside video start it's the following. Hello, citizen. It has come to the government's attention that there is an outbreak of strange sludge being found across the United States. Remain calm. We are working to get this situation sorted out. In the meantime, we here at APS, Anomalous Protective Services, have worked out a few rules to keep yourself safe. Please refrain from contact with sludge. This is vital because the sludge is of unknown origin and will liquefy your body in a matter of 3.1 seconds upon contact. Please do not put objects into the sludge. Giving the sludge sacrifices will only draw the hive mind closer to your brain. Do not put objects inside the sludge or any creatures the sludge made extrude. Please call 911 if you see sludge anywhere. If you see sludge anywhere, call 911 and say SDE, standing for Sludge Department Emergency, and answer the operator's questions. Remain calm. The sludge may break off into tiny slugs that leech off any moderately ice object you can find. That includes you. Do not go anywhere near the slugs under any circumstances. If it latches onto an object, if you ignore it and take the chance to run, a pack is likely coming. Thank you for your understanding. Please follow these precautions and stay safe. That was strange. You get up and walk over to your kitchen. When you look down, there are about 40 leeches holding onto your leg. You pass out. Rest in Reese's Pieces. Oh, right. This one. This one is a little bit long. Starting with part one. This one is kind of my favorite. My favorite kind of rural sword that is. I work at a hotel. I found a strange set of rules. It all started innocently enough, as most of these stories do. I had just graduated from college and was struggling to find a job in my field. Desperation had led me to accept the only offer that came my way. A front desk position at a quaint old hotel on the outskirts of town. Little did I know that my new job would expose me to a set of rules that would turn my life into a nightmare. The hotel was a relic from the past, a beautiful grandiose building with an eerie charm that seemed to draw people in. The staff were pleasant enough, but they all had one thing in common, an odd demeanor, as if they were always hiding something. On my first day, the manager handed me a thick, leather-bound book. Read through these rules, he said. They are central to your role. The rules were unlike anything I'd ever encountered, and the book itself had an aura of foreboding. As I poured through its pages, my heart began to race, and I could feel a growing sense of unease. Here are some of the strangest rules I found. Rule 1. Always address room 333 first. The first rule was to greet the guests in room 333, immediately upon starting each shift. The hotel had 334 rooms in total. The room 333 had a peculiar importance. The manager warned me that failing to do so would result in dire consequences, although he wouldn't elaborate. Rule 13. Never enter the basement. The basement was strictly off-limits. I heard whispers from my co-workers about strange noises coming from down there. But they would uh, m up whenever I asked for details. 
the rulebooks simply say that entering the basement was forbidden under any circumstances. Rule 22! Do not engage with the clock in the lobby! A vintage grandfather clock stood in the lobby, and according to the rules, I was to avoid making eye contact with it. It said the clock was sentient and had a, a malevolent intent. A glance in its direction would result in hallucinations and lost time. Rule, thir Rule 45, the guests in room 13 must never be disturbed. Room 13 was always occupied, but the rule was clear. There. Under no circumstances should I ever enter that room or disturb its occupant. Curiosity nodded me, but I ill paid. As the weeks turned into months, I noticed odd occurrences within the hotel. Whispers in the halls, strange lights in the windows, and guests who checked in but never seemed to check out. I couldn't shake this a feeling that the hotel had a dark secret, and the rules were there to protect it. One night, unable to resist my curiosity any longer, I peeked into room 333 as I made my rounds. The moment I did, I was engulfed by a sensation of overwhelming dread. The wall seemed to close in, and I heard a chorus of eerie voices whispering in an unknown language. I slammed the door shut and sprinted back to the lobby. Time seemed to blur, and I realized that hours had passed and what felt like mere minutes. The clock in the lobby mocked me with its eerie chimes. I under and I understood why it was one of the forbidden rules. My time at the hotel grew more nightmarish, and I knew I had to escape. But with each passing day, the rules seemed to tighten their grip on me making it impossible to break free. The guests, the staff, and the very building itself conspired to keep me within its haunted halls. As I write this, I'm still trapped in this ho in a hotel, bound by the sinister set of rules that has transformed my life into a never-ending nightmare. If you ever stumble upon a job opportunity at a peculiar hotel, beware the rules of government, for they may lead you down a path from which there is no escape. Luckily, I found part two. I work at a hotel. I found Rachel F. Rolls, part two. It hasn't been long since my last update. I thought this time it would end, but I was wrong. Very wrong. The longer I worked at the hotel, the deeper I descend into its sinister web. The peculiar rules, like a riddle wrapped in an enigma, continue to unravel before me. Revealing new horrors and mysteries. Here are ten more rules that I discovered, each one more set unsettling than the last. Rule 57. Never accepts calls from room 101. If the phone at the front desk rang and the call ID displayed room 101, I was forbidden from answering it. The manager warned that whoever resided in that room had an insidious power over anyone who could converse with them. Disobeying this rule, I was told, would lead to a cursed connection that it would consume my very soul. Rule 68. The hotel's mirror must remain covered. A grand, ornate mirror in the lobby was always covered with a heavy, velvet curtain. The rulebook explained that this mirror held the reflection of lost souls and revealing it would summon them into the world of the living. I was never to remove the curtain. Rule 79. Do not speak to the elevator operator. The ancient elevator in the hotel was operated by a shadowy figure who never spoke a rule. A, a word. Rule 79 stipulated that I must never engage in conversation with this eerie operator. To do so would reveal a sinister secret. Those who learned it vanished without a trace. Rule 88. The black cat must never be chased. A pitch black cat from the hotel's heart. Halls, and according to the rule book, no, uh, under no circumstances should I ever chase it away. The cat was said to be the guardian of dark secrets, and disturbing it would bring unimaginable misfortune. Rule 99. The second staircase on the left must be avoided. The hotel had two staircases leading to the upper floors. 
but the rule book warned that the second one on, on the left must never be used. Those who climb the those stairs vanish into a shadowy realm never to return. Rule 110. The room numbers must be counted daily. Each morning, I was required to count the room numbers as I passed them on my rounds. If I missed a room or counted incorrectly, the hotel's layout would change, creating an endless maze of twisted corridors that trapped anyone who entered. Rule 121. The music box in the, al in the attic must not play. <clears throat> There was an old music box stored in the attic. Its haunting melody echoed through the, the hotel when opened. The rule book instructed that the music box must never play, as its tune could awaken up a violent spirits that would haunt the hotel. Rule 132. The guest registry must be kept in order. The guest registry was an ancient ledger containing the names of all the hotel's visitors over the years. I was told that if the names became disorganized, the souls of the departed would rise from their slumber, seeking revenge. Rule 143. The hotel's portrait, a gallery, must be dust-free. A series of portraits in the hotel's hallway depicted long-deceased guests. Rule 143 mandated that I must keep the frames dust-free, as neglecting the city would allow the spirits within the paintings to materialize in our world. Rule 154, the candled room 13 must never burn out. In room 13, a solitary candle remained perpetually lit. The rule book instructs that the flame must never be extinguished, as doing so would unleash an unspeakable evil. I dreaded what horrors might lurk behind that door, but I knew I must never find out. My time at the hotel had become an unending nightmare, and each new rule added to the suffocating weight of my captivity. I could feel the sinister forces that bound me grow stronger with every passing day, leaving me with a haunting question. Would I ever escape the clutches of this malevolent establishment? Hmm. Maybe saying rules. These are long. I suggest you try again. Hi there. Welcome to my house. Not many are willing to babysit for me. Oh. Okay. So I see my computer wants to play this game. I'm just gonna do this. Mm-hmm. And now we try this again. That's better. Let's get back to this. Babysitting rules. Hi there, welcome to my house. Not many are willing to babysit for me, so I'm just glad I saw oh I'm glad you came. This set of rules will be helpful to so read them. And don't lose them. General. Rule 1. Knock three times on the door. I should be the one to answer. 1A. If a child answers, close the door as they aren't allowed outside. 1B. If the door opens but nobody's there, then sandwich at and run to your car. It is too late for us. Rule 2. Immediately remove your shoes upon entering. My eldest child likes things clean. Rule 3. It will be safe until I leave. After that, 
Your survival revolves around staying near the cat. Do not lose sight of her. Rule 4. I have three children. If there are any more or less, close your eyes, count to 100, and open them. Things should return to normal. Rule 5. I will give you a gun. Keep it with you at all times. The children and entities. The youngest, he is relatively harmless so long as you don't give him formula. He prefers solid foods such as bread and carrots. You can play with him but don't upset him. The others are very protective. The middle child. She lived, is in the attic and isn't allowed out. But that won't stop her from coming downstairs occasionally. There's a small opening to slide, to slide food through. She may use it to attack you, so be careful. Feed her anything, but no high sugar meals. Sugar makes her stronger. The eldest. They don't speak much, but pay attention if they do, as the instructions they give may save your life. As previously noted, they like it clean and may feed you to the hounds in the basement, if you don't keep the house tidy enough. They are very picky, and a list of foods for them will be found at the bottom of the page. Do not force them to eat. The entities are their friends, and will take great offense to that, even more than themselves. The Cat the most helpful entity, she will do her best to protect you from harm. The tall one, he is generally very polite, but doesn't like strangers to look at him. If you do look at him, he will probably gouge your eyes out. The basement hounds, these entities are highly dangerous and attack anyone except the eldest. They are the reason the basement door is locked. If you hear a scratching noise, they are right at, by the door, so keep away. Mirrors. Ignore them. They may speak to you, but all they say is lies. Do not insult them. Nighttime. Rule 1. There are three bedrooms. Yours is the one with the red door. The Trolls is the one with the blue door. Mine has a black door. You may not go inside it. I won't take responsibility for what happens if you do. Rule 2. You must all be in your rooms by 10 at p.m. or you will not be able to enter. Make sure to lock the door before getting in bed, as doing so may save your life. Rule 3. The cat will not be able to protect you once the sun goes down, but will not, not be harmed. You may not be as lucky. Rule 4. You should stay under the blanket and you may stay on the bed. It's better to just go in your pants as it's to face the consequences of going into the bathroom. Rule 5. The male child will leave her room between midnight and 2 a.m. You'll be awakened when she does this. If you hear scratching, banging, or shaking on your door, she's trying to break in. If she enters your room, you are good as dead. Do not make a sound as this will entice her further. She is hungry. She will give up at exactly 2 a.m., so pray she takes her time. Rule 6. You will go back to sleep at exactly 2.30 a.m. If you wake up after this or do not fall asleep, follow these instructions. 6a. Look out the window by your bed. If the sky is red, you have angered the mirrors. If this happens, take the gun I gave you. Shoot yourself before they can get to you. 6B. If the sky is normal, take the sleeping pills on the table next to your bed. They will work. Morning. Rule 7. If you have made it this far, you have survived the hardest part. Look at the clock. If it is before 7 a.m., wait until... I don't wait to get up. I'll wake you if you sleep in too much, as I will be back at 8. Rule 8. Breakfast is at 8.30 sharp. Eat what you like, except for the meat. I don't know who made it, but it wasn't me. 
Rule 9. Leave when you like, but ideally before noon. Make sure to say goodbye to everyone, no matter where in the house you are, I'll hear it. If you fail to do this, you'll be unable to return. And I really hope you do. P.S. The eldest will eat plain pasta, Caesar salad, cheese pizza, raw green on olives, cheddar and crackers, and any hard candy. They will drink tap water and Welch's grape juice. Interesting. And finally, last but certainly not least, rules for claiming your prize. Is this serious? Okay. <sighs> when I woke up this morning, something I definitely wasn't expecting was having a gun in my hand. But there I was, staring at, at my bedroom story with a six-shooter literally taped to my left hand. I stood up from my bed and went to the kitchen to find a knife so that I could get the damn thing off my hand. But when I stepped into the hallway, I was greeted by red letters painted all across the wall. The sentence began at the other end of the hallway and ended right in front of my door. Right behind you. I turned around to see a small envelope with a red seal. I looked all around the room, but there was no one to be found. After a moment of hesitation, I picked up the envelope with my free hand and opened it. Inside of it was a handwritten letter. Great job! You actually, he, he made it. So, I made it? What did I make? I couldn't really shake this feeling that I was forgetting something. I guess you've already noticed this little memento I left to you. I taped it to make sure you wouldn't lose it. After all, it's very important. Let's get straight to the point, and you won. Your game sure was one of the exciting ones I've hosted in a pretty long time. As my sponsor of this, particular edition. I must personally congratulate you even though you were given the hardest version. You will succeed and that is quite praiseworthy. Now the only thing left for you to do is reclaim your prize. Prize? Game? What was this letter talking about? Perhaps they delivered it to the wrong person? Still, I couldn't shake the feeling that there was something I should be remembering. Something about the revolver still taped to my hand. Well now, there are a few instructions you must follow if you want to safely reclaim your prize. But don't worry, I'll go over them just for you. 1. Don't lose my gift. I'd be very sad if that happened. And I'm sure you don't want me to be sad. 2. You only need to sp th spend 3 days here before you can claim your prize. The rules will be divided in 4 sections. First is the general rules, then specific rules for each of the nights. This is not additive. Rules from day one are no longer in place during day two, and the rules from day two are not in place during day three. Three of the general rules. Should anyone you meet tell you anything about the rules, tell them that you don't know anything about any rules. If they keep insisting, threaten them with calling the police. If they they even did continue assisting, shoot them with the revolver. Don't worry about witnesses, they won't say anything. 4. The place you had may look like your house, but it is not. If you know something off, such as strange furniture, misplaced doors, or weird appliances, acknowledge them with a phrase such as, that's weird, and they should go away. You may only come, um, 5. You may only come out during the day. Should the sun set with you outside, rush back into the house. Ignore all distractions, no matter what they are. It's just jealous losers trying to keep you from claiming your prize. Six. You may speak with anyone you find during the day, except for the exceptions this is during day one. Just talk to them normally. It's not their fault they end up here. Seven. The lights of your house will always be turned on. The only exception to this is blackout during day two. If you ever come back home and the lights aren't on, Ring the doorbell before going in. All lights should be on again. Rules for day one. The only special rule for this day is that some individuals may speak to you when outside. 
respond to them in the following ways. Eight A. If a man in a military uniform with an eagle cap on with an eagle on his cap salutes you, salute it back and say glory to Artsatska. Ar Ar Should you fail to salute or to pronounce the word Artsatska correctly, run back to your house and wait there for the rest of the day. Eight B. If a man wearing a medieval armor tries to speak to you and engage in conversation, try to make it comfortable for him. He's just lonely. Eight C. If you see a crying child, do not interact with them in any way a, unless necessary. Do not acknowledge their existence. Don't even go around them if, if they're in the middle of the street. Just walk through them. 8D If a girl all in, with her hair dyed in different colors offers you magic paper, politely decline. If she insists, take whatever she gives you. But throw it away as soon as possible. 8e. If a tall man with ginger hair dressed in strange clothes starts talking to you about sparring, put on a Russian accent and say, Not today, comrade. He'll just go away. 8f. If anyone with a blurred face talks to you, just speak to them normally. Don't ever point out that their face is blurred. 2. 9. During day 2, there will be a blackout. No artificial light will be present. Don't worry about it. Just know you won't be sleeping home tonight. 10. Look for anyone who holds any kind of light-emitting device, be it a lantern, a candle, or even a flame in their hand. Call them Joe, or if it's a man, and see if it's a woman. Ask her if you can crash their place for tonight. They will always agree and be friendly towards you. Treat them well. You don't want to anger your host. The rules for day three are a little bit are a little more complicated, so I'll tell you so I'll tell one of my friends to deliver them to you later. Don't worry about anything that doesn't break the rules. You can do whatever you want. With my best regards, Sophia. As soon as I finished reading the letter, I felt my memories rushing back into my mind, memories of the game and of the prize that weighed me, which filled me with determination. After all, what's three more days of hell? Ow. What the heck is this? Oh my goodness. That was our slash rules horror. If you liked this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to do tomorrow because I kind of just gave up on the thing that I was planning on doing. So until then, goodbye!